Let me put up my presentation. Great. Great. So uh, I, I just start, right? Yeah, go for it. Okay, super. Well, uh, hello to everybody. Uh, this is Roberto St. Malo from Madrid and uh, very excited uh, to share some thoughts coming out of this quarantine. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I can't help but think of um, the early days of the internet when one of the main reactions I remember were people uh, mentioning that now it was possible to shop naked from their homes and uh, well, this is, I'm not naked, but this is, uh, you know, along those lines. Now you can do global presentations uh, uh, from almost anywhere. So uh, my, uh, yeah, I will start with a few questions that have led me to this topic. And I'm trying to see where I can uh, uh, pass the slide along. Yeah, let me just uh, share uh, some questions uh, that I think will ring uh, somewhat to to most of us or all of us uh, that that I guess have been particularly in mind uh, these these past few days. Uh, the the first one involves. Uh, you know, this, this sense that, that perhaps we should be grouping together in a more powerful and visible way, uh, escaping the status quo. Um, uh, there, we, we share a lot of concerns, uh, we share a lot of values, we share uh, lots of competence, lots of uh, ability to get things done a related question or just another question that also uh, brings me in this direction is, is this thought that, that, that darn it, we should be, uh, it's such a no brainer that we should be protecting our, our planet better uh, independently of global warming, uh, independently of so much other, uh, so, so many other considerations. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's for, for many of us, uh, it's uh, axiomatically clear uh, that uh, a large part, uh, if not a large majority of our planet should be kept intact and sacrosanct uh, and, uh, and well-preserved uh, for the benefit of, of other terrestrials. Uh, and as humans, uh, with uh, how far reaching we can be, you know, it, it really befalls us uh, to really impose limits on ourselves, limits that, as many of us, I'm sure, uh, will have thought and reflected. You know, many times limitations are our are, are greatest, uh, are, are greatest um, uh, I'm looking for the term, our greatest blessing. Uh, the, you know, with, with another question, are traditional governments uh, necessary uh, with so much technology, with uh, so much, you know, ability to express ourselves, uh, to be in loops, uh, to, uh, for, uh, to, to be all, you know, in, in, in the same loop uh, uh, to make our, our voices and our votes counted. Uh, uh, to to take smarter, more informed decisions. Um, then, you know, I, I also think about about some of the examples we have around. Uh, we have Israel, for instance, uh, and and I guess I'm I'm also um, uh, talking from personal experience and and how. Uh, with due modesty, I feel that, uh, uh, you know, I've been able to come, become a little bit less ignorant. But, you know, uh, 
for me, for a long time, Israel was, you know, just another, another, yet, yet another interesting country, another interesting flag, yes, uh, a country, you know, uh, normally submitted to lots of uh, geopolitic regional tensions, uh, sometimes flare ups. A few uh, months ago, I, I, uh, I, I was exposed to Simon Peres's uh, uh, final book, his biopic, so to speak, uh, at a dinner where his son Hemi presented uh, this book that he had worked on over the last year of his life. Simon Peres, of course, being uh, the last survivor of the founding fathers of Israel. And um, uh, to me, it was a life-changing experience, even after having traveled to Israel and been a fan of Israel for many years. Uh, you know, Simon Peres's uh, biggest uh, concern as he... Uh, as he uh, uh, got ready to depart this life was, uh, darn it, uh, maybe we didn't, we didn't dream as much as we could have. And, um, and uh, you know, stunning to, to really connect with uh, the reflections, the thoughts, the memories uh, of a Shimon Perez in, in a just born country, uh, big patch of desert, in the 1940s, 1950s, uh, who could have suspected that a country like Israel would uh, emerge from this patch of desert, seeing what Israel has become? Um, to me, you know, that, that was, that, that was uh, just an incredible insight. And, uh, and, and, and I think back to, you know, also, and, and this, of course, is a case uh, that is so much more notorious, the case of the U.S. and how it got going with all its imperfections. Um, also been wondering about, you know, the power of our crowds, our passions, our resources, which, which uh, you know, collectively are tremendous, are, are huge. Um, uh, yet we feel incredibly frustrated, or, I, or at least I do, uh, in terms of how little, you know, uh, we can do uh, towards things that we care about a lot. And then another question, uh, or another reflection point, the uh, potential of something like a Gates Foundation, for instance, and this really struck me when, when just a few days ago, after... President Trump takes away support for the World Health, Health Organization. How, you know, in the blink of an eye, the Gates Foundation, Bill Gates steps in, steps in as a powerful, doing what, you know, few countries can probably, could probably do in today's world and, and picks up the tab. Uh, uh, so, it, you know, uh, when you see a Gates Foundation being able to do that, and, 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 and see, you know, the admiration, the leadership uh, it exerts, the admiration it commands. Wow, what, you know, how far, how much farther could something like, like a Gates Foundation go? Uh, you know, what sort of a, what, 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 what sort of a even more powerful, even more impactful entity uh, could it go on to become? Another set of questions. Uh, around things that some of the most important things uh, to be around, to prosper, uh, to be healthy, aren't they already uh, essentially free, perfect, and immediately available? Education, uh, the, the, the plethora, the overabundance uh, of, of the very best education at our fingertips, uh, medical assistance, medical insight, uh, isn't isn't you know all this already here already here and free, and 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 you know and and isn't this what essentially what 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 we pay so much of our uh, contribute so much of our resources for countries to provide? So um, you know with all this in mind, uh, I I you know I, I have to say I I've, I've uh, fixated a little bit on this idea of, isn't it 
time for us to think in terms of creating new countries. Maybe there's a better term, but you know, the idea of a country is, is one we, we can all relate to. It's something we've grown up with. It, normally we have at least one passport, sometimes a couple of passports, and, and they generate a very strong sense of allegiance. And the kinds of new deals, uh, quid pro quos, uh, that uh, we could come up with, uh, I, I, you know, I, I can only think they could be so incredibly energizing, you know, creating countries uh, with, uh, with, with very crisp, clear commitments in environmental terms. Um, uh, well, to me, that's where, that's where the list begins, but, but there are many different, all very valuable ways to begin such a, such a list. Um, and uh, um, we could start with, uh, you know, dual third nationalities. Uh, uh, and, 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 and really, there, you, one can see such, a, such, a, such an initiative uh, not only not only being uh, financially tremendously viable uh, and, and pooling of amazing resources, uh, but even even being initiatives that soon uh, produce land and, and capture land and generate land uh, for the benefit of uh, of association entity members. Uh, but I can only think that it would be land. Uh, based on quality initiatives, so much better used, so much better protected. So uh, the, this is just uh, uh, an idea, uh, an inquietude, uh, some thoughts uh, that I thought would be interesting to share in the context of this, of this unit ventures uh, conference. So, uh, so amazingly put together by, by my friend, Michael Healy. Um, I would uh, love to hear some thoughts, uh, reactions to, uh, to these uh, still very uh, drafty ideas I've just shared. I see. Uh, I, I, let's see here. Hey, Roberto. Yeah. Um, where, where, where are you? I'm actually in Israel. <laughs> uh, okay, and who is this? Uh, this is Michael. Uh, hi, Michael. I don't, I don't see you. Oh, yep, there you are. Yeah. yeah. So have you thought through, um, you know, uh, other than elected officials, right? So, you know, a voting process to elect a leader or multiple leaders. Um, what alternative forms uh, of governance have you thought of that, um, you know, either emerging countries or existing countries um, can adopt as, uh, as kind of the, uh, the next emergence of governance? You know, I, of, of course, uh, in the near term for, let's say, a minimum viable product, uh, that probably is a very important, uh, a very important uh, consideration. And that's where I think piggybacking uh, on amazing people that are already halfway there or even further along, like a Bill Gates and a Gates Foundation, if they can be, you know, brought into the fray, uh, could be very valuable. Um, but, you know, pushing my thinking a little bit further, I, I sort of, you know, come to the view that do, do we really need to, you know, is our elected officials that, that, that important a part of the equation when we can have uh, sentiment and votes, you know, so in, in such real time and when we, when, when we can be assisted with uh, artificial intelligence tools and artificial intelligence type support, uh, elected officials start to become a bit more secondary. I also think of the case of a Switzerland where elected officials, you know, it's almost, you, you almost have to do research to find out the name of the president of the country. And I, you know, in, intuitively, I find that a very desirable state to reach. Cool. 
Thanks. Uh, okay. Hi, hi, hi Lawrence. Hey. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Hi, how are good. you? Great, great to see you. Yes, good to see you. I'm very sorry I, 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 I missed the beginning of your uh, talk, but it to my heart. Um, I've been a, a, uh, a nomad now for uh, three years, uh, meaning that I decided three years ago, uh, let's see what happens if I don't have a home and if I travel the world and if I go where I want to be or where I have to be according to projects or my inspiration or whatever. So obviously, uh, I'm heavily impacted uh, in my um, you know, the, this lifestyle that I have chosen for myself, for which I was actually doing some work to think what is, what is the future of this? Was the future of citizenship? Was the future of our mobility? Was the future of owning a home and all of these things? So uh, it's very funny that uh, until a few months ago, uh, I was giving, um, you know, lectures on this, on this, you know, geographically fluid notion and this idea of of global nomadism and things like that. And, and for uh, being back to square one and having to rethink everything properly. Um, I've heard um, this idea now of reopening, you know, the ability to travel depending on your, your medical uh, uh, predicament and medical status and having these different types of passports maybe connected to your, um, to, to your medical record, which, you know, there were already some, some you know, or some tiny connections when you arrive in, in some airports in Asia where they take your temperature. They've done that in Thailand and in Singapore and Hong Kong for a long time. Um, but now, you know, getting inside of Israel, when I, I came here a month ago, I had to self-quarantine for two weeks. So this mobility of ours is heavily impacted. Now, that being said, sorry for long introduction to my question, uh, but that being said, at some point eventually, we will figure out a treatment for um, for this disease and and maybe a few other uh, corona type of uh, of um, of attacks on the on the on the human body, and eventually we'll get back to having a choice. And um, and I guess I, I'm just wondering for you in your mind, like what's what is the future of our distributed uh, lifestyle? Um, does that, you know, I, I figure that, you know, your geography is completely independent to your nationality, uh, which is a thing. And I think my other um, question or thought is to create this new type of countries, again, a topic very dear to my heart, should we uh, look not only to Israel, but to Israel's past? and look at smaller units and look at the, the kibbutzim that the, the kibbutz movement that made a lot of sense after the war. In fact, my family um, um, created a kibbutz just uh, before the state of Israel was created. And, they, and uh, one of my grandmother's cousin who's almost a hundred years old still lives in there. So uh, yeah, so I'm just wondering like to think about the future models for countries, will we have to think smaller units? We will have to look back to Athens uh, and, you know, and the city-state or things like this. What, what's your thought on this? Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for, for, you know, all those thoughts and considerations. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> darn it! I, I have uh, I have lots of thoughts uh, on all on you know I, I just wrote down a long list of thoughts as you were talking. You know, I, I have to say that I, and, and many of these are tremendously personal. Uh, at a personal level, I, I I I feel you know very guilty. I mean, when I when I look out the window here in Madrid and see such clear skies uh, day after day after day. And, um, and, and when I haven't, uh, when I had like six trips, I, I was to have taken over during this set there in the seven, past seven weeks or eight weeks, um, how I was on my way to Panama for the third time this year from Madrid and turned back at the gate on the 11th of March. Um, at a personal level, you know, I, I just, 
I, I just, uh, you know, feel terrible. I, you know, Roberto, this is not the way, you know, one, one, this, this is part of the unsustainability, part of the unsustainability that that you're, uh, you know, um, uh, critic that you are complaining about all the time. So, so, so yes, uh, you know, being very domestic. I think we can. I, I think, to me, uh, uh, for I, I have a tat attachment, uh, personal, family, business in in many places. So so you know, I, I, it will be very difficult to get away from those, or to end those. Uh, but I think you know, I I at least you know think I will be more conscientious about uh, taking many flights. And, and making many trips, and rather do less trips, make them longer, make them more more sensible, uh, more meaningful, and and try to you know do a lot more things uh, remotely. Uh, that on on the one hand, and um, and and you know na nationalities, and even even recent cases, right, like Israel, like Singapore. Uh, in a way, they are they, they they are a little bit obsolete, right? Because you're just grouping people, even even in some cases where there's let's say more shared intention and more shared purpose, you're still you know grouping people very randomly, and 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 uh, limiting their their expression and their path uh, or slowing it down uh, in in very in very significant ways. The idea of of small communities. Uh, uh, sounds, uh, you know, sounds magical to me. Uh, the the kibbutzim spirit, and, uh, and 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 you know, and, and smaller communities that that may be uh, developing the the way the way a Singapore has developed, for instance, or perhaps at a smaller scale. But I I think that's that's super interesting grounds for examination, for exploration, for experimentation. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, as another thought on Israel, I, I, I don't know if, if globally, geopolitically, we, we focus as much as we should, uh, or on the Singapore and, and really celebrate, uh, you know, the, the amazing uh, achievement of countries like these in, in, in such a short period of time, literally in decades. How you go from nothing to some of the most advanced uh, communities on the planet at national levels, at traditional national levels. Hopefully, a little bit of that was semi sensible. Yeah, no, it, it's exciting. I, I I wish we can take this conversation further um, with a, a few other people. We're we're, we're having a. A, 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 actually a, a bunch of, of meetings on this topic and future of governance and what's what's next for for all of this countries citizenship mobility um, I mean you know I, I, I want to believe that there will be changes up to us so up to, well thank you for being the for being the voice of that that's amazing and you and you and let's please uh, let's be sure to continue this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should organize a, 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 another session. Just say when, and uh, happy to to hear you more. <laughs> Fantastic. Likewise. Absolutely. I, I see some very dear friends uh, in the room, and 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 some that I and and actually all of them. Also, people that I admire and respect tremendously, and and I die to hear their thoughts as well. Is it? Do I need to unmute people or in general or? It's your room. <laughs> you do whatever well, you want. I, I'm, I'm figuring <laughs> how do I unmute everybody? Is there? Uh, I don't know. People can I, I thought I'd use Zoom enough, but apparently not. Michael, do you know how I can unmute everybody? People can unmute themselves. I'm not sure okay, you can do great. That. All right. So I'm not guilty of... Um... 
So maybe another question I, I would like to hear your thoughts on is, uh, you know, if let, let's say if all of us collectively, I mean, I, I, I let's say potentially I'm speaking for the voice of this room, we're all um, aspiring for change and for something new and maybe new models and eventually experimentation and things like this. But how do you um, think the, you know, the actual power is in place, the, the, the system, the establishment, how will it defend itself? Everything yeah. is like an organism at all. What's the immune system for it, for our institutions all over the world, actually? Yep, yep, that's a... Uh... Because they're designed, they're our institutions, um, this is the, the former uh, French lawyer in there speaking, but our institutions are designed to resist any types of coup. Yep. It doesn't matter if it's benevolent or not benevolent, right? Absolutely. You know, I think a Namibia would be more comfortable selling a good part of its country, for instance, uh, or an Algeria, uh, or, uh, but, but maybe a Brazil would be less comfortable, right? Losing 10 yeah. or 20% of the Amazon. Uh, yeah. and, and, and when they saw that happening, uh, you know, the antibodies would, would come to life. Uh, so, I, so I think that's a, that's a really important consideration. And maybe that's yet another reason to think in terms of, of, of more contained, smaller communities that are not so um, land intensive or space intensive. On the other hand, what, what uh, gets me most excited uh, in thinking in these terms is, is just, you know, um, uh, protecting the planet and, uh, and, and, and making an important part of the, of the planet, uh, sacrosanct and, 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 mm. you know, safe from, from our bad, from our sometimes bad habits or from these habits that sometimes creep out. Um, uh, so that obviously is more land intensive land and, and water intensive as well. Um, so, so yes, I think that, I think that is, that that's a bit of a, a challenging front, but certainly, but, but certainly, you know, doing things that are smaller in, in, in space occupation, I think are, are, are maybe a more, more viable in the short term. Um, Roberta, so I, I first started started exploring um, self-managed organizations, um, you know, for companies like my own and um, and for not nonprofits that I'm on the board of, um, and we've implemented things, you know, slowly, um, uh, taking a lot of uh, uh, learnings from uh, Lelou's reinventing organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, some of that brought me, and I just posted in the chat. Um, uh, about micro solidarity, um, have you come across Richard Bartlett and some of uh, some of his like open source um, writings? And, and so that does speak to your point, you know, a bit about the size of the of the group and and kind of um, the self managed organization, you know, starting from a, a much smaller uh, partnership or crew, and then you know eventually kind of leading into uh, more of a crowd. Um, so there's there's certainly several ideas or or models out there. Uh, yep. And the question is really to kind of iterate them and, and see which ones, you know, work in different uh, contexts. Yep. Yep. Ab absolutely. Yeah. In al along those lines. Yeah. The well, maybe not. Not. Uh, what 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 I find uh, very exciting also is the uh, the the level of commitment. Uh, and of activity and initiative and of perseverance that can come when you uh, are part of a community with, uh, with, with a truly shared sense of purpose, which is really pursuing that which you're most passionate about. Uh, and, and, and yes, yep. Um, uh, I guess, yep. Uh, very interesting, Michael. Would 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 love to talk further about that. Awesome, please. Yeah, let's uh, yep. let's coordinate. Yep.